Praise God. Shall we all stand up? We'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for family and church. We thank you for your presence and your word. We thank you, Lord God, that we are here today. And you are very much available for us. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord God, that you wished for us and you willed for us to come. And we thank you that by your grace we have come. And Lord Jesus, there, is a lot, there are a lot of things for us today. And we, we, we declare that we are, wise, we are wise in you. That our hearts are open and our minds, Lord God, are receptive. And we will receive and we receive everything that you have for us. Lord, the Bible said that a wise man will bring out everything new and old from his storehouse and bring in the kingdom. Amen. That's what we have today, Lord Jesus, because we're willing to give up everything to get everything that the kingdom has for us. Old and new, we're getting them out just, just to get you, Lord God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Napakaganda naman. Parang pelikula yung kwento ng buhay niyo. I think you, to, to, to do that, you have to come up with your own. But that's nice, you know. Imagine for a short while, things happening like that. How much more, how much more as we continue in the Lord? Uh, and, and congratulations for the water baptism. That is total obedience right there. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Today we'll be discussing why go to church. You know? And I was just sharing to... Uh, I was just sharing to... Uh, uh, to the youth leader one time, uh, there was this man who became a famous, famous big preacher. He said when he was when he was six years old to twelve, six to twelve years old, he had a drug problem. Six to twelve. He had a drug problem from six years old to twelve years old, because the mother keeps drugging him to church. <laughs> <laughs> Church than a man. Why go to church? Some of you probably have a drug problem. You were drugged to church. Or you were threatened to go to, you know, bodily harm to come to church. Let me just read something here from a secular writer by the name of uh, T.M. Luthman. This is from the New York Times op-ed on April 20, 2013. New York Times it was. New York Times is very, very secular. The title of the op-ed was, Why Going to Church is Good for You. New York Times, why going to church good for you? And this is, this is ito yung kanyang uh, gist. One of the most striking scientific discoveries, scientific discoveries, say scientific. scientific. About religion, say religion. religion. So science and religion. Are, <laughs> so religion is being studied by science. And here is one of the writer at the op-ed of New York Times said, one of the most striking scientific discoveries about religion in recent years is that going to church weekly is good for you. Hindi pastor ang nagsabi. The scientists, maybe they've run out of things to study. They said, let's do this. They said, science and religion, the class, and here comes religion studying, science, uh, uh, science studying religion, and they found out it's good for you. Now, for science to, do, say, to say something is good for you, it has to come up with something that they can measure, right? Hindi pwedeng yung... Like, what is maganda? You know, we have patients coming to the hospital, I'm sick. Sick, sick of what? Uh, I just feel sick. Like, how? You're hot, you're cold, you're, you're angry, you're dying. What is it? But the science will say it has to be measured. So here we go. Religious attendance, at least religiosity, boosts the immune system and decreases blood pressure. It may add as much as two to three years to your life. Praise God. This was not somebody who was paid to do this to cause you to come to church. This was an op-ed from an unbeliever, uh, a totally secular newspaper, backed by science. It adds three years to your life. It makes your immunity strong at bababayong blood pressure on you. So look at the person next to you and say, I love your immunity. Your blood pressure is low. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. This is our scripture today. Uh, let me just bring this to life. Okay. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. This is what the Bible said. 
Shall we all stand up? Let's read this, because this is scripture. Hallelujah. Now when Jesus came, let's all read it together, into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly changed, charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord, for your word. The word church is actually getting some uh, Greek word na, na uh, kairos, meaning belonging to the Lord. This is kurios. But the word, uh, it, was translated, it was picked up from, from another word the ginamit po ni Jesus sa sabi, I will be, upon this rock I will build my church the Greek word there was iglesia kaya may meron tayong na iglesia ni Cristo the word sa Tagalog is iglesia uh, sa Greek is iglesia the iglesia meaning it is a people called out iglesia is a gathering or a group of people called out of darkness into the light of God a group of believers in Jesus ibig sabi iglesia is Ordinary people believe the Lord. They are taken out of darkness and sin and brought into the kingdom of God. This is similar to po, naalala niyo yung, yung uh, Israelis, I'm not, the Jews in Egypt, for 400 years they were slaves, right? Anong trabaho na doon? They were making bricks and laying bricks. That's it. Kaya nga, yung buhay nila was centered on Making bricks and laying bricks. Making bricks. Pag lumabas yung anak lang si Junior, ay si Junior, ako napakamatino, matipuno. Ano kaya mag- paglaki niya? Paglaki niya, dalawa lang pagpipilian. Making bricks or laying bricks. <laughs> Di ba? Pabang lumalaki yan, ako, ang siyang sipag-sipag, ang talitalino niya. Paglaki mo anak, ano ka? Tatay, making bricks or laying bricks. Ganun lang talaga yan. Walang mangyayari. And then kapag meron pong buntis na, na hudyo, paglalaki, patay. Pinapatay lang yan, pinapakain sa buhaya. Alright? We saw that in the Bible. Because they live in a place whereby they were being used and they live in a situation where there is attrition. Unti-unti silang pinapatay. They're slowly being killed. They were just using them up, slowly being killed. That is the place, what we call, of sin. So Israel was taken out of the situation and brought into a place, this time you can imagine big and believe big things and it can happen to you. Imagine... And I was looking at this event. That the biggest wish for them during their experience there is, I hope I'm getting melon today. Or licks or fish. That is the greatest thing that you can wish for yourself for that for the day. Saratung week na to, the Egyptians will give us melon. I can go over to the watermelon place and get myself a mountain of melons. So this is the this is the situation they were in. They were slaves. The greatest thing that they can wish for is have fish or melon or licks. And then when they got out of Egypt and they went to the promised land, they became landowners. Unbelievable. It blows their mind. What is a landowner? Yung nagbabay ng tax. He has a landowner. A landowner, he, has, he belongs to a place where it's overflowing with milk and honey. The church is the same, coming from a place of sin where you are bound into a place of righteousness this is the place where you are, your life is changed and the promises of God are true. And you, your mind, Sabi the Bible, whatever you can come up with, the Lord can do greater than that. Amen? And that is the calling. That is, that's what happens when a person believes the Lord and is brought into the kingdom of God. Now, called out of darkness into the light of the kingdom of God. Called out of sin into the righteousness of God. Those who... Who are, who are these people called into? What were, what were they called into? They were called into a place 
gathering which is called Ecclesia. What, what set them apart though? Did you know that in the Bible, the Bible said when the, when the, when the Jews left Egypt, the Bible said there were a lot of Arabians that came along with them. Hindi mga Hudyo. Mga saling pusa. Because when they saw the ten plagues came and there was death, blood, and frogs, and the whole thing, the, this, these people, they called them the Arabians, saw it and they said, man, something's going on with these Jewish people. I want to join them. And so when they started putting this blood on the lentils, a lot of them put blood too. Although they were not Jews. And they got, and they got spared. They had to pass over. And when they followed along, the Bible said, if you would read the summary, they were like, many of them that came along, but they were not really called. Saling pusa lang sila. In the church, may mga saling pusa. Whenever there is a gathering of believers, some are not believers. You know why? Kasi masarap sumama sa church eh. Hindi nagsisigarilyo, hindi nagmumura, konti lang yung bastos. <laughs> Di ba? <laughs> Oh, wala. Sige na nga. Nalungkot si Jerry. Eh. Nalungkot na pagkakas. Eh. Sige na nga, wala. You know? It, tsaka may pagkain. Lalo na akong Pilipino church. Yung adobo talaga maalat. Masarap. Lagyan mo maraming kanin. So anyway, it's nice to be in the fellowship of people who are nice. Because people who are, who are ecclesia, those who are called from, from darkness into light, they realize that, you know, I have to shed all this, this pangit on my life. You know? I'm going to take off all these things that's ugly in my life. And then, and of course, you cannot take them off all at the same time. You start coming in and you start uh, joining the fellowship and you start hiding the bad things in your life, which is a good thing, you know. Because if you don't hide the bad things in your life, you know, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. Hey, listen, he's, at least he's trying. You know what I'm saying? At least he's trying. So when you get there, a lot of people are attracted to groups like this. But they don't have the relationship. Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus said, now who do, say, who do people say, and he had a survey. Survey says, so of all the people asked, the disciples asked, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, blah, blah, blah. And he asked Peter, so how about you, Peter? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and this is what Jesus said. Peter it's not because you're smart that you figure this out. Okay? So I want you to raise your hand if you're smart. Man, we are in a congregation of less than smart here. <laughs> the Bible said Peter means meaning small stone, pebble. But who do you Peter, but who do you say I am? Peter said, but you are the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, or as of Jonah, for flesh and blood. It's okay to be smart. Raise your hand, everybody, smart people. Because our smarts cannot reach heaven. That's why God has to reveal it. This is revealed to you by my Father who is in heaven. And then Jesus said, Simon Peter, you are a small stone. Upon this rock, the Greek word there, Petros, Petros, it was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. Because of the revelation, now as a church, you know a Petra. Look, the, the definition of the word Petra is a one gigantic mound or a cliff of a stone. Hindi pinagpatong patong pero isa. That is one, hindi yan, hindi yan, by the way, hindi yan pinagpatong-patong sedimento. It just jutted up from the ground as a big granite rock. This is uh, El Capitan in uh, Yosemite, I think, in California. With the revelation of who Jesus is, the church becomes a Petra. This is why the Catholics believe that Peter... Uh, is the, uh, the, 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 the first pope because they called him Petra. No, Jesus is not making Peter Petra. Peter remains as a Peter. Simon is a reed. Yung, what is, anong mal sa reed sa Tagalog? 
Alam mo yung yung sa yung sa ilog na malalaki mga halaman na kung saan yung alon ang pag